Steph, you had your son in the building for his first NBA game, and your your mom and dad were here, you, your son. What did it mean to have three generations of the Curry fam in the house? Oh, it wasn't his first, but it was first with, uh, obviously, my dad here and my mom. Oh, sorry, yeah, not to correct you, but um, it's special. I got to talk about every time we play the Hornets, whether it's in Charlotte or here. It's always special and surreal to, you know, have a you know, family. Um on the broadcast for the Hornets and, you know, whoever shows up in the family and watching in the stands. So pretty special moment. Um, a lot of cool pictures that I've kind of dug up from when I was in Cannon's position, uh, watching my dad play. So passing the torch is pretty crazy. Hey, Steph, how did you see the scoring that you and Clay had blend with the playmaking that Kevin and, and Draymond showed there? Uh, and I know we have said we have 15 turnovers, but for the most part, we're very decisive on every possession, just trying to find the best shot. And Clay got off to a hot start. Um, you know, I, I, and from there, he set the tone, and then we were just, you know, making solid basketball plays. So, um, I know it's kind of a uh, short window, but there's a pattern of KD, you know, picking and choosing the spots, being a, uh, a true playmaker and getting other guys involved. Um, and tonight the flow is just kind of, you know, let the game dictate that. And um, Obviously, when you're scoring like, like we were tonight, it's fun for everybody, no matter who's finishing the possessions. You guys shot 63% from three, which I think is a franchise record for at least 30 attempts in a game. Uh, is how much of that is rhythm, and how much of that is just shot selection and shot quality? I don't know the breakdown, but it's when you create good shots early in, in the in the game that starts to have a snowball effect for sure. Confidence goes up. Um, it almost feed, you feed, it feeds upon itself. Good possession after good possession after good possession. So um, I think we just had. The antennas up every possession. Of, like if we had three or four passes, something good was going to happen, and that was pretty much the case. That is an amazing jacket. Oh my gosh! We, we get you one. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I appreciate. It. <laughs> Steph, I, <laughs> I know you guys have have bigger plans ahead, but. Um, to get so much from the bench, you know, ahead of the playoffs and also clinch a fifth straight um, division title at this stage, uh, playoffs around the corner, um, feel pretty good in, in terms of the consistency you guys have right now? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, we've had a little Jekyll and Hyde type situations the last two weeks where we're either all the way there or like a Dallas game can happen or we fight you know, against Minnesota and just kind of, you know, down the stretch type of games. But tonight, nights like tonight show our full potential. And uh, I know Charlotte's in an interesting situation, but, you know, we, we control, you know, the tempo from the jump. So uh, you got to really keep things in perspective, like, like you said, around, you know, what we're, what we're playing for, what we're building towards, you know, in the playoffs. And it's, it's obviously starting to get real with the countdown. Um you know, being what it is, and it's a good feeling right now, so we got to keep it going. Uh, Steph, what does it say about this team that Boogie gets ejected and Andrew comes in and your team just blows the horn itself off the court? And talk about how he affects your game, specifically with, like, uh, screen angles on the top of the key. He's very familiar with our system, obviously, you know, with the years that he was here and, you know, helping us win that first championship, so... It was an easy transition for him. He looks amazing. He's got, you know, a lot of life left in those legs. And uh, he knows whenever he's, you know, asked to play and called on to, to contribute and impact the game, he's ready. So um, it's been a big help for us to have, you know, somebody behind DeMarcus that just you can rely on. So, uh, you know, we'd rather have DeMarcus, you know, obviously on the court and tough way for him to finish the night. But, uh, you know, full squad is is uh, pretty powerful. You uh, you obviously saw the, the hot stove definition that the uh, NBA gave. What did, what did you kind of think of that descriptor? And uh, did you get any explanation on it? 
No, I didn't really need one. I just thought it was very specific. So I wanted to play into it a little bit. And I brought a prop to the game tonight. That was it. So if you've seen Quinn this season. His minutes have been inconsistent. His shot was inconsistent. Now he found a groove. How has he stayed sane? And have you been able to help him just to kind of stay on track? You don't have to say much to Q. It's just a matter of, you know, encouraging him, understanding that uh, he last year he was instrumental in helping us, you know, win a championship, you know, finish that regular season with injuries that we had and all that. And he played amazing and, you know, gave us some contributions in the playoffs. This year is much of the same. Um, night to night, doesn't know, you know, when he's, how many minutes he's going to play, if he's going to play, or, you know, how consistent that's going to be every night. But he, he stays ready. Um, he's obviously confident in himself, and, you know, he has to be considering, you know, his journey to get to this point. So um, a night like tonight where he was about to come out in the end of the second or middle of the second quarter, and he had the hot hand and kind of a group effort to switch the rotation up to help him finish or, you know, keep playing, and he took advantage of it. So um, that's, that's who we are as a team. Steph, I hate to bring the mood down here, but uh, about 30 minutes before the game, uh, Nipsey Hussle was unfortunately shot and killed down in L.A. I know you guys share some great, great moments together on film through a YouTube show. Um, just kind of share – your thoughts on Nipsey Hussle, who he was as a person, because he was doing some great things down in L.A., especially in the community. Just if you could share some moments on uh, – some words on Nipsey. Yeah, that was tough. Um, obviously, it surprised a lot of people. <coughs> um, and well, I got to know him last year and had a great conversation um, about, you know, who he was as a person, what he – what he stood for, what his message was, how he tried to inspire people, <clears throat> considering you know, where, he, where he grew up and, and how he turned that into something extremely powerful um, and represented the entire city. So definitely a sad, sad, tragic event. Um, obviously, send prayers to his family, his community, um, to Lauren London, his, and you know, hopefully they uh, stay strong through this. It's tough. Um, <clears throat> you know, senseless crimes that – don't need to happen, especially with a guy that was doing what he was doing. So definitely tough. It's one of those before the game, you try to just you know, pay your respects the best you can, um, you know, send the love down there to his family.